And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. Former President Donald Trump is promising to fight his way back onto the primary ballot in Colorado. The state Supreme Court disqualified him, citing the insurrection section of the 14th Amendment, Section 3. This is the first time a candidate has been disqualified for this reason. The high court says its decision is based on the former president's role in the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. Joining us to talk about it, attorney Eric Dick and University of Houston downtown professor Dr. Dietrich von Bietenfeld. It feels just kind of like it's a destabilization of our really democracy, to be honest. It's kind of if you're following the position that Donald Trump's taking, that it's election interference and all these things are going to kind of prevent him from getting elected. It does. It it helps. It, I think it's going to help him. I think it's now more people see that, you know, he's not just he's not just some wackadoodle making this up. You have another state or you have a state that says, no, you can't even you can't even vote for him. Uh, you have polling data, then this isn't from some, um, you know, from reliable sources saying that Trump's up at minimum tied, more likely than not above Biden. So it kind of runs into his his rhetoric, which is it's kind of dangerous rhetoric of saying, hey, you know, uh, this is election interference. Since Biden can't win, what he's doing is he's fixing the election where you don't even get the chance to to vote from Donald Trump. I don't I don't think this is good for a society. I think it's probably really bad for a society. My hopes are that the the US Supreme Court changes this cuz I don't think it's good. All right, Dr. Von Bietenfeld, your thoughts on this? Do you think this is one of the wheels in Joe Biden's uh, attempt to stop Donald Trump or do you think the courts made this decision and uh their ruling as it is stands? Well, we know that the composition, particularly of the Tenth Circuit in Colorado, is primarily liberal. One of the aspects that we weren't overly concerned with is the reality that Minnesota, which then is now going to allow Trump on the ballot, Michigan, Biden won that slightly, and Colorado were not states that uh, President, former President Trump were really going to have to spend time and money in because they're, they're Democratic-leaning states. And the composition of those courts is pred predominantly dominated by Obama appointees and equal with Trump and, and Biden appointees. So it's it's not uh, unsurprising. And I think this isn't necessarily a concerted effort by the Biden campaign as much as the courts showing a liberal leaning. But I do agree with Eric that, you know, we don't want to become Pakistan, where we see a continuation of the military placing people in power because the public completely mistrust the political and democratic republic apparatus where you just say you know what the courts have a political bias the legislature has a political bias we'll just let the military decide uh, who is going to be our leader so i do think it does threaten democracy when uh, state courts are trying to make federal rulings on what the 14th amendment means when the supreme court itself hasn't really established fully what an officer of the country is many experts say that the president is not included in that constitutional insurrection aspect that the court cited. They were clever enough to include a Gorsuch opinion uh, reference in the Colorado State Supreme Court's ruling. So when it goes to the Supreme Court, Gorsuch is going to have to say what he meant back in 2012 isn't what he meant today. Um, and so that's gonna be an interesting dance for him on a, on a legal standpoint and precedent base. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's a Biden campaign thing. I think it's a liberal bias so in the courts. Now, do we think, is it possible for Donald Trump to win the presidency again if, let's say, Colorado is the only state that won't allow him to run for re-election? Could he still win with those pieces on the board? Absolutely. Easily. Yeah. I don't think that's good for Colorado because now it's basically they didn't even participate they didn't even vote for the person that gets in. I don't think that's it's not good for our society. Even if they vote against him, they should at least have him on the ballot to tell him no. It just it it doesn't look good. It's bad optics, bad for the people in Colorado. If they don't, if they want to refute him, they should at least have the option to to refute him. And of course, we've never seen anything like this. You know, I mean, and we've been saying that a lot lately, Dr. <laughs> Bill Bedenfeld. We've it's never seen pandemic. anything like this. <laughs> unprecedented is the word of the decade. So we're going to see a lot more unprecedented decisions, a lot more unprecedented actions, and they're going to become precedented.
And how many more states are looking at this option of pulling him off the ballot really quick as we wrap up here? Well, we've got two in process, but at the end of the day, once there's blood in the water, the sharks will come. So you're going to see a number of uh, entities using this decision, this ruling, to levy lawsuits in other states to try to remove him. All right. Go ahead, Derek. And the problem you're going to have with that is it's they're going to have to be uh, more liberal leaning courts. It's going to have to be a majority, it, it, more than a majority, like uh, almost all liberal leaning. Because even here, you just had a slim margin in the liberal side that that uh, agreed with this. All right, gentlemen, thank you for joining us here on the Factor Uncensored.